Hello good people, welcome to 247 Saga TV, the home of amazing and mind-blowing videos. Be sharing the 10 most notorious dangerous criminals who will never be forgotten in the history of Nigeria. But in this video we will be revealing these heartless men and monsters in human body. The things they did, how they managed to survive for long and many other hidden things you don't know. And please don't forget to hit the red subscribe button and the bell icon below so you will never miss out on any of our new interesting videos dropping soon. The first to begin with is number 10, Kayode Williams. Before becoming the Director General of Prison Rehabilitation Mission International and a man of God, the presiding Bishop of Christ's Vessel of Grace Church, Bishop Kayode Williams was one of Nigeria's most notorious armed robbers. He was a member of the Ishola Oyenusi gang who stood out when his boss was captured. He was known to be a dreaded robber who wasted no time in killing his victims. Reportedly, during a confession years ago, Bishop Williams narrated how he pounded little babies and used them for spiritual fortification. He was converted to Christianity while serving a 10-year jail term, and since then, he has not backed out from preaching to prisoners and trying all he can to rehabilitate them. 9. Evans Evans is the most recent amongst the criminals in our list today. He is originally called Chukudi Dume Onoamadike. Popularly known as Evans and fondly referred to as the Bologna Kidnapper. This is because he is believed to be one of the richest criminals in the kidnapping activities in Nigeria. DCP Abakiari reportedly attributed Evans as a smart and crafty kidnapper who evaded arrest for four years even though he was on the most wanted list in three states, Lagos, Edo and Anambra states, respectively. He was arrested in 2017 in a joint operation by the Lagos State Police Command and the Inspector General of Police Intelligence Response Team led by DCP Kiari, who was the head of the unit at that time. Evans was charged with murders, armed robberies, kidnappings, unlawful possession of ammunition, conspiracy amongst others. He was specifically charged with the abduction of a businessman, Uche Okorafo, and the demand of $2 million ransom. On February 25, 2022, the Lagos State High Court found Evans and two other guilty of kidnapping and conspiracy. As per reports of the court ruling, the trial judge said Evans showed no remorse in the dock and tried to lie his way out of the crimes despite the video evidence before them. He was thereafter sentenced to life imprisonment. 8. Ghana Tewase Akwaza, well known as Ghana, was the head of a military group in Benue State. He reigned for more than a decade, but his criminal activities peaked between 2015 and 2020. His gang invaded communities and kidnapped residents at will, collecting millions of naira in ransom. Ghana was also accused of massacres, assassinations, robberies, cattle rustling, terrorism, and murders. He levied farmers, traders, and prominent people. A bounty was placed on his head after several failed attempts to track him down. He was eventually murdered by the Nigerian army after he turned himself in for amnesty on September 8, 2020. The seventh on our list today is Osisi Kaunko. One of the most feared, notorious and dangerous criminals who walked the streets of southeastern Nigeria is Osisi Kaunko. His real name is Obiauma Nwanko. He was a former hunter and ex-fighter of the Icelander Confraternity, founded by ex-militant leader and River State warlord Ateke Tom. Osisi Kaunko's gang and few other notorious kidnap kingpins held Abia State captive for more than two years in the late 2000s. In a report by Vanguard, Osisi Kaunko claimed to have over 3,000 men in his camp. He was well known for kidnapping and armed robbery. Him and his gang majorly carried out operations in southeastern states, namely Abia State, Akwaibom, and River State. They robbed banks, kidnapped, and killed anyone in their way. Initially, he claimed to be fighting for his people and for good governance. However, it seemed he changed course. It was also reported that prior to him becoming a kidnapped kingpin, he worked as political thug during election for politicians. Reports and words on the street added that banks paid him 2 million naira monthly as insurance from robbery. However, this was not confirmed. Reports also added that Osisi Kaunko and his gang worked with corrupt security operatives and politicians holding political positions in the state and country. 
He was so powerful that he reportedly influenced the appointment of a local government chairman in his domain. Reports also had it that the elective regularly made payment to OCC Kaunko and the cows that was found in his camp when it was raided was given to him by a local government chairman. OCC Kaunko and his team kidnapped the young, old and even rich foreigners who visited the country or were working in the country. They killed several people and raped women. Him and his gang decided who entered or who left the city. Villages were deserted and towns turned ghost towns because of these dreaded criminals. Reports also added that people who tried reporting their evil deeds to security agencies were apprehended by these same criminals and killed. In one occasion, a traditional ruler and his wife were assassinated by the kidnappers after the royal father squealed to the police on their operations. He ran the state with other kickpins, however he was the boss and most notorious of them all. These criminals had sophisticated weapons and ammunition. Also, in one case, the police at Agba police station reportedly abandoned the station when they could no longer handle the superior firepower of the boys. While they were still terrorizing the state, the then governor Theodora Oji granted them amnesty to drop their arms. However, Osisi Kaunko and his gangsters became even more daring and kidnapped school children and NYSC girls. Talking on how he met his Waterloo, Osisi Kaunko disappeared into thin hair when his first camp was raided by the Nigerian military. However, reports claimed he was tipped off about the arrest by top security operatives. After the unsuccessful operation, the Nigerian task force then backed down on the hunt for Osisi Kaunko. It was stated that Osisi Kaunko's girlfriend who was pregnant for him was caught and she gave valuable information on the kingpin's whereabouts. Also, following an escape of a kidnapped victim from Osisi Kaunko's hideout who gave out good information to the operatives, the military was able to pinpoint his exact location and lay down bush for him. The soldiers were even said to have also laid ambush on trees for days, waiting for the right time to strike. Now, talking about how he was killed, it was said that his girlfriend was used to lure him out, and when he suspected it was an ambush, he pulled out his gun, but it was too late. Osisi Kaunko and his other two accomplices were gunned down. Osisi Kaunko and one of his accomplices died on the spot. The other died at the hospital, according to reports. Two soldiers were also said to have lost their lives in that operation and many kidnapped victims were freed. Osisi Kaunko's corpse was paraded before the governor, Theodora Oji, and the remains of him and his slain men were taken to the police headquarters in Umaya, Abia State. There was jubilation all over the city of Aba, Abia State, and the country at large. Recovered weapons were six AK-47 rifles, two RPG, one machine gun, one GPMG, 11 RPG bombs, 133 rounds of 7.62 mm special ammunition, and 99 AK-47 empty magazines. Six. Godo Godo. Abiodu Egunjobi, nicknamed Godo Godo, was the version of Lawrence Anini during his own time. The one eyed monster was one of the deadliest armed robbers Nigeria ever had. The 36 years old rose from the slum to the leader of a gang that defied all reasons. He struck with precision, killed without mercy, and terrorized Lagos and the Southwest recklessly. Before his arrest on August 1, 2013, he gave the Lagos State Police Command so much headache for 14 years. In fact, he was at that time topping the most wanted list of the command with several police commissioners assigning the toughest of cops on his trial. He began his voyage into the deadly world of crime after spending seven years in prison for what he considered a minor offense. As a scrap dealer in the slum of Gatankowa, Abule Eba, he was involved in a fight and the police arrested him with no one to bail him out. He was sent to jail and he believed it to be an injustice and blamed the police for it. Hence, his brutal hatred towards the police force was built. The Lagos State Police Command, led by the then Commissioner Umar Manko, mandated the Special Anti Robbery Squad, led by the Superintendent of Police Abakari, to bring an end to the reign of Godo Godo, and that began intensive investigations which led to his arrest and the fall of his mighty empire. 5. Mighty Joe Shortly after the notorious kingpin of armed robbery in Nigeria, Ishola Oyenusi was executed. His second in command, Isiaka Busari, better known as Mighty Joe, took over the scene. Nigeria was still coming out of the pangs of the civil war, and with the death of Oyenusi, they thought the era of violent crime had been shoved off, but another hoodlum sprung up and became even deadlier. In Mighty Joe's gang were ex-militants who were demobilized from the army. 
Therefore, the gang had tactical, strategic, and technical weaponry knowledge with which they helped the nation, particularly the Southwest, to ransom, robbing, and killing with reckless abandon. Mighty Joe was even deadlier than Oyenusi and was known to operate at any time he felt like. Taking a human's life was nothing to him. He strode the hemisphere like a colossus from 1971 when his boss was killed till 1973 when he was nabbed after robbing a hotel bar attendant. The fourth person on our list is famous Shina Rambo. The Abi Okuta Ogun State born Rambo was a terror in the 90s and the brain behind many crimes in the western parts of the country where he robbed and killed with impunity. He was so feared even by the police that many thought he was invisible. He was said to have been on his way to Larewa Motors to buy a Pathfinder SUV when he was apprehended by the police on the Ojota New Garage Long Bridge. When the police stopped the driver, they discovered a lot of money in a carton in the truck of the Datsun car and began to question the possession of such huge amounts. An argument ensued between Rambo and the policeman and he attempted to disarm one of the policemen, however, another policeman shot him from the other side of the road. It was said that he was not with his charms since he was not going for an operation, therefore the vulnerability of his body to physical and weaponry attacks. Again, it was however reported that the person killed was not the real Shina Rambo. Reports said he was another ex-bandit who claimed to be Shina Rambo. The real Shina Rambo was reported as a man of God now by the name Matthew Oluwani Femi. Reportedly, in his confession a few years ago, Pastor Oluwani Femi described himself as a hardened criminal, a terror and killer who was fetish and believed in rituals and human sacrifices. He narrated how he specialized in robbing exotic cars on highways, banks, and that nothing could stop him, not even security operatives, as he was totally invisible. 3. Osteriko Mwamama Mwamama started off as a pickpocket and street urchin. He transformed into an armed robber at the age of 22. He started by robbing market women and banks. He was reported to have killed 25 policemen and at least 100 civilians during his span of crime. Derico Mwamama remains one of the deadliest armed robbers to have come out of Nigeria. In the early 2000s, the 22-year-old was probably the king of the underworld in the eastern parts of the country. Traders could not display their wares peacefully while many slept with one eye open. Derico robbed commercial banks in Onisha, cutting away millions of naira. Travelers who had to pass through the state held their breath, expecting him to strike at any time. The then governor of the state was driven to frustration with worries on how to handle the menace of Deriko. He was described as the personification of terror. From Nnewi to Mpo, from the village in Umuleri to towns in Iheala, the old and young were terrified at the mere whisper of Deriko Mwamama. At that time, he was said to be invisible and could not be arrested. The governor, however, called on the Bakasi Boys, a well known militant wing of the Anambra Vigilante Service. A local vigilante group set up to curb crime and criminality in the southeast. The Bakasi boys went on a manhunt and captured Deriko on Tuesday, July 3, 2001, on his way to Onicha, reportedly on one of his crime spree. On July 9, 2001, however, six days after Deriko was captured, the Bakasi boys paraded him at the Ochanja market before beheading him with a matchet. Two, Dr. Ishola Oyenusi. Dr. Ishola Oyenusi is a name etched in the history of Nigeria as one of the most violent armed robbers, a criminal who unleashed boundless terror on many Nigerians. He went by the nickname The Doctor even though he never had the professional qualifications to be one. He took the nation by storm shortly after the civil war ended. No one believed that The Doctor would ever be captured as he was famous for disappearing or his body not being penetratable by bullets. In fact, he must have had so much faith in his charms that he smiled all the way to the stakes. Even as soldiers aimed their rifles at him and his co-criminals, Oyenusi still radiated an aura of invisibility. When Oyenusi reigned at the height of his regal confidence, he declared the bullet has no power over him. Legend has it that Oyenusi got into active robbery back in 1959, but he committed his first major robbery when he snatched the first car he saw on the road along Abad Makole Road in Yaba, Lagos, and killing his owner in the process. This robbery was carried out just because his girlfriend was broke. He eventually sold the car and added the money to his girlfriend. Such was the ferocious nature of his audacity, and his arrogance was also legendary. By the end of the Civil War, 
Oyenusi had metamorphosed into a cold-hearted robber who took delight in causing pains to his victims. Dr. Ishola Oyenusi's execution was celebrated by relieved Nigerians who trooped out in masses to the bar beach in Lagos to witness the end of a man who had headed the country to ransom. As the crowd thronged the beach, cheering and booing Oyenusi and his band of six convicted robbers, he kept on smiling and waving at them down to the moment he was shot by the firing squad. The very first on our list today is Lawrence Anini, aka The Law. Anini can never be forgotten, he is one Nigerian notorious armed robber who reigned during the 80s in the Old Bender State, now known as Edo and Delta State. He was so bloody that he was discussed at the State Security Council meeting during the General Ibrahim Babangida's regime. Anini migrated to Benin at an early age, learned to drive and became a skilled taxi driver. He became known in Benin motor parks as a man who could control the varied competing interests among motor park towns and operators. He later dived into the criminal business in the city and soon became a driver and transporter for gangs, criminals, godfathers and thieves. Later on, he decided to create his own gang which included Mondi Osumbo, Ofegi and others. They started out as car hijackers, bus robbers and bank thieves. Gradually, he extended his criminal act to other towns and cities far north and east of Benin. Anini was finally arrested in a major operation led by the then superintendent of police, Kayo de Umwarero, bringing the reign of terror to an end. He was shot in the leg and nabbed following a tip off on December 3, 1986, at number 26 Oyemwosa Street in Benin City. Anini was confined to a wheelchair throughout his trial following the amputation of the leg that was shot during his arrest, and he was sentenced to death by Justice James Omoagege of the Benin High Court. He was executed on March 29, 1987. Thanks for watching this very interesting video. And please don't forget to hit the red subscribe button and the bell icon below so you will never miss out on any of our new amazing videos dropping soon. God bless you all.